with the 18th of January 2024 thorough newspaper analysis. Okay, चलिए. We will start with the editorial section, which in which we will be discussing what is prior approval and why is it needed before investigating public officials accused of corruption. Then the way we go, we will be discussing some news update, the legal news update of the day. चलिए. The Supreme Court on Tuesday delivered a split verdict in the former Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu plea to quash an FIR in the alleged skill development scam case. So what Justice Anirudh Bose and Bela M. Trivedi disagreed on whether the Andhra Pradesh CID was agreed to seek previous approval from the state government before conducting an inquiry into the allegations against Naidu. Justice Bose, Bose held that prior approval was necessary that, that the CID did not have when it openly opened the inquiry. And Justice Trivedi, so which uh, you know held that it was necessary to seek approval only to investigate offenses committed after 2018 and the year this requirement was introduced. So what has happened? There's a split verdict on a similar case by the two judges. So let us understand first the law. So in 2023, the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act, which governs the agencies like CBI, was amended. Under 6A, it was required to seek approval from the central government before investigating alleged offenses under the Corruption Act if the employee in question held a rank higher than Joint Secretary. So this was the, this was the portion which was amended. Supreme Court struck down this requirement in 2014. Four years later, the Corruption Act was amended and a similar provision was introduced in Section 17A. Under this section, if a public servant commits an offence under the Act while discharging their official duty, investigator must receive approval from the central state government or a competent authority to open an inquiry or investigation. Now, what was the challenge to the provision? So in 2018, again, this provision was challenged by the NGO Center for Public Interest Litigation, challenged the constitutionality of the previous approval requirement. It argued that it's very logical that it would be extremely difficult to determine if an offense was committed by a public official while they were discharging their duties if no investigation could be conducted in the first place. So placing this burden on police officer an investigating agency would in fact protect corrupt official and the level of corruption would rise and that was pretty logical at that stand. So the CPI also pointed out to the 2014 case in which the Supreme Court has struck down a similar requirement and in 2023 the case was listed before the bench of Justice B.V. Nagaratna and Sanjay Carroll. So previous approval in Supreme Court, the case involving Chandra Babu Naidu is not the first time that Supreme Court has decided whether the previous approval requirement would apply retrospectively. Last September, a constitution bench held that officials cannot claim immunity under Section 6A even if the offence was committed before this provision. In 2018, the former Delhi Police Commissioner Rakesh Asthana was being investigated for allegedly accepting bribe. Then additional Solicitor General P.S. Narsima had opinion that there was no need for prior approval to lodge an FIR. The case against Asthana reached the Supreme Court in 2021 but was adjourned repetitively without being heard and was declared infructuous after Asthana retired in 2022. So it was a split opinion and this is a case where previous approval from the central government would be required if the public official is accused of corruption act. That's the question and we have a split opinion by both the judges. Now let us come to the national news of the day where Vice Admiral and Pramod assumed charge as Director General Naval Operation. So in a Vice Admiral A.N. Pramod assumed charge as a Director General Naval Operations on 15th of January 2024. An alumnus of 30th Integrated Cadet Course Naval Academy Goa, he was commissioned into the Indian Navy on July 1. The flag officer is a CAT AC uh, King Air Operation Officer and a Communication and Electronic Warfare Specialist. 
Now, let us understand an important day. It, the Navy Day is celebrated on 4th of December. Army Day, we recently celebrated 15th of January. And Air Force Day, 8th October. And the position holder, Chief of Defense Staff, General Anil Johan. Chief of Army Staff, General Manoj Pandey. Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal B.R. Chaudhary. And Chief of Naval Staff, Admiral R. Hari Kumar. Indian President inaugurated 5th Meghalaya Games. So Indian President Srimati Draupadi Murmu has inaugurated 5th edition of Meghalaya Games in Tura Meghalaya. Okay. Now, in this, there will be nearly 3,000 athletes engaging in competitions across 23 disciplines distributed among 16 venues. Now, notably, it's the first time the venue is Tura, a departure from its previous exclusive location in Shillong. So that's the poster of 5th edition of Meghalaya Games. Chale? Now, 2004, 2024, military strength ranking, US most powerful, India at the 4th position behind China. So, India has maintained its position as the 4th strongest military globally, with US being named the most powerful, followed by Russia, China, according to the global firepower ranking. A total of 145 countries were assessed on the base of their global military power. India's neighbor, Pakistan, has been ranked ninth, and Italy has been ranked, takes the 10th position. Okay, the ranking for the index are reached after judging the countries on several parameters, including military resources, natural resources, industry, and geographical features, and available manpower. HP launches My School, My Pride campaign to transform government education system. So, in a move aligning the National Education Policy 2020, Himachal Pradesh has unveiled the My School, My Pride campaign after the Apna Vidyalaya program aimed at revolutionizing the quality of education in government school. The under this program, giving back to society initiative, retired teachers or other employees, professional, housewife will be encouraged to come forward and become a member of the academic support team. This team will step in during teacher shortages or leave, ensuring continuous academic support. And non-academic support will contribute to sports, co-curricular activity, and skill training and arts. So a campaign launched by My School and My Pride, Himachal Pradesh. India tops global indoor air pollution chart with highest average annual PM 2.5 level. So India has topped the global indoor air pollution chart with the highest average annual PM 2.5 level followed by China, Turkey, UAE and South Korea. Now, the Dyson Global Connected Air Quality Data Project analyzes more than a half a trillion data points to understand user behavior and compare indoor and outdoor air quality. The national sample size for India is 37,000 plus connected Dyson air purifiers. MHA, that is Ministry of Home Affairs, cancel FCRA license of Center for Policy Research. So, Ministry of Home Affairs has cancelled the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act license of leading think tank Center for Policy Research. The FCRA license of Center of Policy Research was suspended in February last year for 180 days and then the suspension was extended for another 180 days. The Income Tax Department conducted a survey operation against CPR and two other organizations, Oxfam India and Bangalore-based Independent and Public Spirited Media Foundation as part of probe to look into foreign funding. Okay. And parallelly, the CBI is also investigating Oxfam India and they have cancelled their FCRA license. Arunachal Pradesh Pakke Paga Hornbill Festival gear ups for the 9th edition. So 9th edition, a state festival of Arunachal Pradesh will take place at Sijosa in the Pakke Kesam district from January 18 to 20, according to the statement by the organizing committee. The festival will focus on wildlife conservation with a particular emphasis on hornbill. Four species of bird, that is Vrithhead, Great Indian, Oriental Peed, and the endangered rookfur's neck are found in Pakke Tiger Reserve of the Arunachal Pradesh. Okay, the area is home to Nishis, the largest tribal group in Arunachal Pradesh.
LIC becomes most valuable PSU firm surpasses SBI in market valuation. So LIC surpassed State Bank of India to become the country's most valued PSU firm by market valuation. LIC stood at the ninth place in the ranking of top 10 most valued firms. And the government holds 96.5% stake in the company. Ranjan Gogoi to be conferred with Assam Bebhav Award. So former Chief Justice of India and Rajya Sabha MP Ranjan Gogoi to be conferred with the state's highest civilian award, Assam Bebhav. This was announced by Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswasharma. Ranjan Gogoi served as a 46 CGI and the first to hold the post from Northeast. During his tenure, the Supreme Court pronounced the historic verdict on the decade-old Ram Janmabhumi Babri Masjid case. He is currently a Rajya Sabha MP after being nominated by former President Ram Nath Kovin on 16th of March 2020. R. Pragnanda beats chess world champion Ding Leren to become India number one. So Indian teenage chess sensation R. Pragnanda earned an epic victory against Regan world champion Ding Leren after the China in the fourth round of 2024 Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Netherlands. With this victory, India Projati surpassed five-time world champion Vishwanath Anand to emerge as a country's top-ranked chess player. Last year, there was a very phenomenal news. Pragananda became the youngest silver medalist as FIDE World Cup. CCI approves proposed amalgamation involving Shriram Group entities. So, Competition of Commission of India has cleared the proposed combination involving the merger of various entities of Shriram Group. Shriram Life Insurance Company is jointly promoted by Shriram Group and South African-based financial services firm Sunlab Group. Shriram General Insurance Company is a joint venture between Shriram Capital and Sunlam Limited. It is an IRDAI licensed company offering a wide range of general insurance solutions. Okay. New Zealand Pacer Team Saudi create history. So you, uh, so you, I, um, I think. I think um, I'm sorry, guys. That's I think uh, that's the uh, the heading is different and the news is different from it's a technical issue from us uh, our side. So what has happened? The news is the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Monday asked Switzerland to hold a high-level peace committee of world leader on ending Russia full-scale invasion. Okay, about now, there are two countries involved. One is Russia and one is, you know, Ukraine. So, Russia, Prime Minister Mikhail Minishtun, capital Moscow and head of state of president Vladimir Putin. And Ukraine ke baare mein baat kare. So, capital is Moscow, currency is Russian ruble, continent is Europe, Asia, official language Russian. Now, Prime Minister Mikhail Mishustin. Okay, chale, chale. And if you, you can ignore this case, we can come up with a rejuvenate, like a revamp of this particular slide. So please ignore this case, ignore this slide. Our value faces obstacle as Guatemala new president to deliver on change. So a Bernardo Arvalo was sworn in early Monday, Monday as Guatemala's new president. Many doubted they would ever see the day as powerful interests aligned against his anti-corruption campaign and authority through various legal challenges. Who is Guatemala's new president? So Arvelo is 65-year-old son of former Guatemalan president Juan Jose Arvelo. Now, let us understand some facts about Guatemala. Guatemala President Alin Jardaro Gyameti, capital Guatemala City, and official language is Spanish. Yaad rakhiga, Spanish. Now, coming up to the legal update, the Supreme Court talks about 197 CRPC applies only to act in discharge of public servant official duty. So, the Supreme Court has said that the prior sanction of prosecution as per section 197 CRPC is not required 
to prosecute a public servant for the act of creating fake document as the alleged act do not form the part of official duty. So fabrication of document does not part a form of official duty. Now, uh, the High Court has quashed the criminal proceeding against the public servant for the warrant of prior sanction under nine, Section 197 of CRPC. And the case name is Shada Shari versus State of Karnataka and another. Husband not including wife and children in service register. Uh, denying financial assistance is cruelty. So a husband who is not interested in living with his wife and children by not giving them any financial assistance and not including their name in the railway service register would be committing cruelty. The court noted that none of the reasons stated by husband were proved as per law and in fact, and the wife was able to show that it was the husband who had not discharged his duty even while the wife was willing to lead a peaceful life and this case comes from the Madras High Court. That's all for the today's news update. If you have a previous TNA, if you have a particular TNA ke description, ke saath, a particular link hoga for the daily quiz. I am repeating this particular sentence in English. If you guys want to revise your previous TNA, you can stall the daily quiz uh, link which is attached with the description of this particular TNA. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.